Edward the Blue Engine is the oldest member of Sir Topham Hatt's original 11 engines. At the age of 121, he is still in full steam on the Brendam branch line. Needless to say, though, Edward isn't what he used to be, and needs to be repaired more often than the others. It was a very busy November, and Edward was feeling it. Phew! What a day! But Edward tried his best, as he always did, and everything went on schedule. Hello, Edward. You look tired. Oh, just another hard day's work. But I'll admit, I'm not what I used to be. Ah, oh, sure. You can always go to the works to be repaired. No, I mean mentally. Physically, you're right. I can just get an overhaul if I get old. But I don't know. All this hard work stresses me out mentally, too. When you do something for so long, it just becomes the same old thing and you get tired of it eventually. <laughs> well, you could retire from regular service, I suppose. You mean, be withdrawn? Scrapped? No, 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 not quite that. You would just no longer do regular work like regular passenger service or freight. You'd be used for more special occasions. Think of Stephen and Glynn and Neil. Well, I don't think I'm ready for that quite yet. The next day, Edward was resting at Brendam Docks when Bill and Ben snuck in. <laughs> oh, God damn it! What are you doing, Bill and Ben? It worked! We finally managed to spook him this time! I wasn't spooked, I was uh, startled. It's no use, Edward. You're getting too old to outsmart us. The twins then cheekily ran off. Edward ignored them, like he usually did. Just then, he noticed someone else approaching him. It was someone he was not expecting to see at the docks. It was Glynn, the so-called coffee pot engine. Hello, Edward. Hello. What are you doing here, Glynn? Oh, don't you know? I've been asked to help Salty with the shunting during the holiday season. Oh, yes, I remember now. But I'm a bit surprised. I thought you had retired from actual, um... Actual work? Well, technically, yes, but that doesn't mean I can't lend a hand now and again. Think of it as semi-retirement. Do you miss being in full service? Well, in some ways, yes. But at the same time, I'm just too old for it. You can get as many overhauls and repairs as you like, but eventually you just lose the strength mentally, and there's not much you can do to fix that, I'm afraid. I'm old, 146 years old, and no new paint job or oiling is going to change that. Well, at 146 years old, you still look in good shape. Why, well, thank you, Edward. I'm afraid I must attend to me shunting. It was nice talking to you. Of course, and have a Merry Christmas. Lynn's words stuck in Edward's mind. Surely, he wasn't ready for retirement. In fact, he was due for regular visit to the works. Yet, Glynn was only 25 years older than him. Meanwhile, Bill and Ben were very pleased with themselves. We finally caught Edward off guard! He's not as clever as he used to be! <laughs> I'll tell you that Edward works harder in one year than you will ever in your whole lives! There aren't many 121-year-old engines who can do the work he does. Exactly! That's the point! He better be careful or he'll leave his brain behind one day. If he's still got one by then. You listen here, you shaky little engines. Edward is old, but he is still mentally sharp as a tack and one of the most respected engines on this island. I'll have no more disrespect of him from you. The trucks had overheard the conversation. When the three engines left, they began chatting. You know, that green diesel was right. For all these years, Edward has bumped us around, and despite our efforts, we've never been able to pay him back. We haven't tried recently, though. Exactly. I suggest next time we get assigned to his train, we should see whether old reliable Edward is still, as they say, reliable. Unfortunately, next time turned out to be the next day. Edward the Blue Engine had not had an accident with trucks for almost a century, but that was about to change. Hey up, Edward. I'm sorry about Bill and Ben. I don't know what's got into them. Oh, that's fine. 
Wait, how do you know? They were going on and on about how you supposedly aren't as clever as you used to be. And then they made quite a rude comment about you leaving your brain behind. <laughs> Let's be honest, Boko. We all know I'm old. It's bound to happen sooner than later. Don't say that. You're doing damn well for an engine of your age. Why, thank you. And don't worry. They'll have to drag me off the tracks before I stop working. I hope. I probably shouldn't have told him that. Oh, Boko, you idiot. Boko was right. Although he seemed to brush it off as a joke, Edward was now quite worried. His workload was quite heavy lately, and sometimes he did want to just do nothing for a change, but he was so unsure, and his thoughts distracted him from the job. The trucks noticed this, and their chance came. Yeah! And they suddenly slammed into each other with so much force that the train instantly went faster and faster. It was a huge shock for Edward. You little demons! Cut it out this instant! On! On! Faster! Throw them off the rails! <laughs> the driver pulled the brakes to maximum, but it was no use. His brakes were worn and couldn't handle the force of the trucks. Come on! Almost got them! We're gaining! But he then remembered the bend ahead. It was at this moment Edward lost all hope. The driver won't choose you again. He wants strong engines like us. Edward is impossible. He clanks about like a lot of old iron. And he is so slow, he makes us wait. Did you see him straining? Positively painful. Just pathetic. He should give up and be preserved before it's too late. Edward is a useless steam pot. He should be retired. Edward's accident was quite a mess. Bill and Ben came with the breakdown train, but they were certainly not laughing. They were silent and overwhelmed with guilt. Miraculously, the driver and farmer had managed to jump clear onto grass, causing minor injuries. Edward, on the other hand, lay sprawled on his side, just like Henry was after pulling the flying kipper the first time. He was lifted onto a flatbed and then taken to the steamworks. The fat controller soon came to meet him. Don't worry, my dear Edward. This was in no way your fault. Those trucks are very badly behaved, and they won't be working on this railway any longer. It kind of is my fault. I should have been able to stop them. I have failed you. Nonsense. It would have been very difficult to get them under control at that speed. You did everything you could. But don't fret, my dear Edward. The workmen tell me you'll be fixed in time for Christmas, and you'll be as good as new, ready to work again. About that, sir. I'm afraid I'm no longer mentally able to keep up with the work. I think, well, I would like to retire from regular service. I don't think you're quite ready for that. We can certainly lighten your load quite a bit. No, sir. I think my time has come. Do, do you really think that? I'm afraid so. Today proved to me that I am no longer the clever and wise engine I used to be. Physically, I know I can just be repaired again and again, but mentally, I just don't think I can cope anymore. For almost a century, I was able to keep the trucks under control, but today, I failed to do so. I'd be much happier working like Glynn, Stephen, or Neil as special engines. I hope you understand. The Fat Controller's face fell. It made an expression that Edward had never seen on him. It was pure sadness. No, I understand. I believe you are still a very useful engine, but I also want what's best for you. If that is what you wish, 
and you will have my utmost support. Thank you, sir. I'm dreadfully sorry.